You are really welcome as we come to worship together this morning. The Lord is risen. He's is risen indeed. indeed. So we come again to worship together, focusing on the reality that Christ has risen and that he is with us. And he invites us in our worship to times of refreshing. We're going to begin with some responsive prayer. Would you join in the words in capitals? What can bring us happiness? The love of God among us. What can bring us happiness? The justice of God around us. What can bring us happiness? The breath of God within us. Open our minds to the scriptures. Open our eyes to Jesus in our midst. And so we pray together, love of God, grow in us. Fire of God, refine us. Justice of God, define us. Tears of God, weep in us. Joy of God, dance in us. Beauty of God, caress us. Story of God, run deep in us. Mystery of God, bless us. We're going to sing together. Uh, this, this song is sometimes titled, I think unhelpfully, focusing on us, but in fact the, the focus is on the Lord Jesus, light of the world. So we're going to sing light of the world, you stepped down into darkness, and then our response to that, here am I, here I am to worship.
and we pray together these words. Jesus, I take a moment to confess the places where my life has become dulled by the darkness of sin. Light of the world, illuminate where I have not loved you or my neighbour in my words or my actions. I ask for your forgiveness. And today's collect. Risen Christ, you filled your disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Linda is now going to read for us from Luke's Gospel. Our Gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. The disciples were still talking when Jesus himself suddenly stood among them. He said, may you have peace. They were surprised and terrified. They thought they were seeing a ghost. Jesus said to them, why are you troubled? Why do you have doubts in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It's really me. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have a body or bones, but you can see that I do. After he said that, he showed them his hands and feet. But they still did not believe it. They were amazed and filled with joy. So Jesus asked them, do you have anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of cooked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. Jesus said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms must come true. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer. He will rise from the dead on the third day. His followers will preach in his name. They tell others to turn away from their sins and be forgiven. People from every nation will hear it, beginning at Jerusalem. You have seen these things with your own eyes. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, O Lord. And now Phil reads to us from Acts chapter 3. When Peter saw the people's astonishment, he said to them, Fellow Israelites, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us? as if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, 
has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. You disowned the holy and righteous one, and asked the murderer should be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and know was made strong. It is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has completely healed him, as you can all see. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he'd foretold through all the prophets, saying the Messiah would suffer. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out and so that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so now we share in that confident faith of the disciples telling the truth about what happened. So we declare together, Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. We come now to a time of prayer and we're going to bring to God many issues that concern us. And I invite you immediately to put into the chat facility any particular area on your heart at the moment, perhaps a group of people, perhaps a situation, that is appropriate to share publicly, perhaps a nation of the world. So I do invite you to add to the chat facility, but I will lead us in some prayers of intercession as we go. Father, we give you thanks for the gift of eternal life. May we know in our lives that Jesus is alive and comes to us in times of refreshing. Turn our doubts and disbelief into awe and wonder until we rejoice in the presence of the risen Lord. We pray for all those struggling at this time, people and churches, for those who have lost vision or grown cold in their love through the last year especially, for Christians who have lost faith or who have entered into deep doubt. We pray that as we come out of lockdown, your church may witness to your resurrection with joy and refreshed vision. We pray for all those who seek to relieve hunger and suffering. We pray this morning for the United Nations and the World Health Organization. We pray for peacekeeping forces and all who work for the well-being of others. We pray for nations fearing the future. Especially today, we pray for the Ukraine, for Myanmar, for Cuba, 
for India and for Canada facing the ravages of COVID at a very high level. We give thanks for all those with whom we have shared food and faith, for all those who have sustained our bodies and our minds and cared for our spirits. We pray for all those who have been isolated and deprived of love. And we ask that the coming days will bring fresh hope as we are enabled to meet again in new ways. We pray for our town and all those who serve, for those who serve us in shops and service industries. And we pray for all those standing for election in the coming weeks. And we pray for all who hunger for food and long for shelter, for love and spiritual refreshment, for the many whose loneliness has increased in the past year, for those who have been ill without someone to support them, and for those who found it hard to cope on their own. We pray for all those whose grief has been complex and extra lonely. Today we pray again for our Queen and Royal Family in the aftermath of Prince Philip's funeral. We pray too for Cindy. May they know your comforting presence afresh. And we long, Lord, for the day when we shall see Christ Jesus as he is in his glory. We pray that we may triumph over darkness and death as we meet with you, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. And so we join together in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Before Chris comes to speak to us, we're going to listen possibly join in, but to a reflective new song that's entitled simply Thrive. Many a dream has died Like a tree planted by the water We never will run dry So living water flowing through God we thirst for more of you Fill our hearts and flood our souls With one desire just to know you and to make you know me Lift your name on high Shine like the sun, make darkness run and hide We know we were made for so much more than
our Father's heart Into the world we're reaching out To show them who you are So living water flowing through God we thirst for more of you Fill our hearts and flood our souls With one desire Just to tell Easter in primary schools, as has been my job for quite a few years, using props like this, you know, classic crucifix. Children ask, why did Jesus die on the cross? Adults sometimes quietly ask me in the classroom afterwards, as I seem to be such an expert. <laughs> um, my simple answer is, why did he die on the cross? Because his enemies wanted to kill him slowly, as a warning to others. You know, don't mess with us, don't mess with the people running the temple, don't mess with the Romans. Conform, or else this is what happens. But we Christians say there's more to the cross than that. And I do go on with, <laughs> I do expand on that. It wasn't just one more horrible thing happening in the history of the world. We say God allowed it to happen. The cross was the moment when the, the great dividing line between God and the human race was ripped apart. The chasm was crossed, the chains were broken, you can use whatever metaphor you like. Um, but something completely new happened 2000 years ago. And when Jesus first appeared to his disciples afterwards together, he said, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. Repentance for, for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. 
You are witnesses of these things. And after a miraculous healing in the temple, Peter explained it to a gathering crowd like this. This is how God fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets, saying his Messiah would suffer. Both Jesus and Peter say it's all there in the Hebrew scriptures. God sending a servant who would come, suffer, die, then rise from the dead. This would open a new pathway to God for everyone. And 2000 years later, that's why we still celebrate Easter. It's why the cross is still the most potent symbol of all. But in Ethiopia, you'll find different examples of the cross. Ethiopia is a tough place to live, always has been. Um, but you'll notice there's no figure of Jesus because this is a symbol of his resurrection power. God's love exploding across the world in all directions. Ethiopian Christians will wear small versions of it and they're all slightly different around their necks. And at the end of an Orthodox service, they'll queue up to kiss the cross that the priest is carrying. This cross is all about not death, but life. But why is this strange tale of um, death and resurrection still important in, in the year 2000? Uh, oh, sorry, 2021. Um, we live in a country that doesn't do God very much, frankly doesn't take the Easter story seriously. Um, if people do know it, it's a bit of a myth, isn't it? You know, it's a metaphor. You don't need God to live a good life. Do you? Just be kind. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Well, sorry, but no. Perhaps we Christians need to talk a bit less about church and a bit more about Easter. Because the Easter story is fundamental to becoming fully human. And we Christians can easily forget that. Because deep down, we are all sinners. We all miss the mark. Sometimes we all miss the target of doing the right thing. Because deep down, we all have parts of our personality that can damage us and damage others. <coughs> we can blame our parents or our environment or society, but we all carry that potential. So sometimes things go wrong. Our world goes wrong and we all play a part in that. But this strange Easter story of 2000 years ago still speaks to that wrongness. It says, Everyone falls short of what they could be. And God knows that. <laughs> so God stepped into history to close that gap to show love in its purest form. To show what evil can do to try and wipe out love. And show how God's love is stronger, stronger even than death on a cross. But we have to acknowledge we need his help. No, like anyone on 12 step plan of recovery, we have to acknowledge our inability to help ourselves and then ask for help. It's called the old word repentance, turning around. We need to experience that resurrection in our own lives, too. And God's empowering through his Holy Spirit. It's a daily thing. But do you see? how Peter, when he was in the temple, speaking to a gathering crowd, how he shared the message. Here's his words. Now, fellow Israelites, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders. You see, he's identifying with those asking questions. He's talking to his fellow countrymen and he doesn't blame them. For centuries, Jews have carried the blame for killing Jesus from Christians. And that is so wrong. Peter, the Jewish friend of the Jewish Jesus, does not blame them. He goes on. But this is how God fulfilled what he foretold through all the prophets saying his Messiah would suffer. He's carefully explaining this in ways that these temple goers will understand. 
Repent then, turn to God so your sins may be wiped out. He offers a new beginning that starts with turning one's back on the old ways of seeing and doing things. Repent so your sins may be wiped out that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. And then he talks about God offering refreshment for his people. A fresh start. A new hope. And as our world starts to stagger its way out of lockdown, with everybody desperate to get back to normal, we, ne we need to remember that the path to a full life, a rich life, won't come from more shopping or the chance to have a drink outside a pub or a nice meal out or a game of golf or whatever it is that floats your boat. It won't even come from seeing our friends and family again face to face. And these are all good. But let's be honest. They can all go wrong as well because we're human. We all seem to have that talent of making good things go wrong. And the cross of Jesus and the empty tomb is God's answer to all that wrongness. So as we come out of lockdown, let's live that Easter answer. Let's find new ways to speak the Easter story, to share it with our friends and neighbours and family in ways they can get and understand. And let's offer God's refreshment to anyone who wants it, because it's why Jesus came. I want to finish with us moving into a song, and it's a prayer, it's a prayer response. It goes like this, create in me a clean, clean heart. Create in me a work of art. Create in me a miracle. Something real and something beautiful. Because you're not finished with me yet. You're not finished with me yet. By your power I can change, I can change because you're not finished with me yet. And I wonder how this prayer applies to you. Later on in our discussion, later on in our discussion time, um, what is the cross? What does a new life mean for you? Create in me a clean, clean heart. Create in me a work of art. Create in me a miracle. Some
So we return to the words that we said at the beginning of our service. And we join together, just confessing where we've blown it, but recognising God's graciousness and forgiveness to us. So again, I invite you to join me. Jesus, I take a moment to confess the places where my life has become dulled by the darkness of sin. Light of the world, illuminate where I have not loved you or my neighbour in my words or my actions. I ask for your forgiveness. Thank you for bringing light to my darkness and your mercy to my failings. And the Bible tells us clearly, if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all wrongdoing. So may the Father forgive you by the death of his Son and strengthen you to live in the power of the Spirit all your days. Amen. As we come toward the end of our service, we remind ourselves, we are witnesses to the love of God, our maker. We are witnesses to the peace that Jesus gives. We are witnesses to the Holy Spirit in our lives. We are witnesses. We go out in justice and joy. We're going to end our worship time together with a wonderful old hymn, To God Be the Glory, Great Things He Has Done.
you believe Jesus has been raised from the dead in glory. Amen. You believe you have been raised with Christ. Amen. Set your hearts and minds on the things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. It's been wonderful to worship with you again today. We are very close now to coming back together uh, in our services in church, in the buildings. Um, that's going to happen two weeks from today. We're coming back with a big celebration. We've got a number of people being baptised and confirmed uh, on the 2nd of May in Tweedmouth, which is fabulous. And we have a full church for that day uh, of, of those that they want to share that testimony with. But what we're asking everybody else to do is to go at the same time, a 10 o'clock service, for a go to Spittal or Scramliston, where all of us together will share in renewing our baptismal vows. As we come out of lockdown and we come back into the world, we're going to declare our faith and celebrate and pray for alongside all those who are making their public confession of faith. 